Okay. Well, the first one I caught, um, I bought a kayak because I, you know, I was catching thresher sharks for years and years on my um, boats and stuff. So I decided I'm going to start, you know, try to do it on a kayak. So um, um, got all ready and bought like 20 pounds of mackerel to chum up with, which is pretty stupid because there's so many great white sharks around here. But you don't think about that because I was pretty young and um, got an empty um, milk jug and tied a steel leader with a swivel and then you tie your fishing line to that and um, put a whole mackerel on it and believe it or not I started out outside indicator at Rincon and that was the first place me and Jimmy my cousin we were doing that and um, threw it out there and just watched the jug kick back chumming up chunks of mackerel in the water um I was all ready and stuff, but you know, you never know what's going to happen because you're in a kayak, you know, you're trying to balance yourself. But all of a sudden, the jug went down, and I fought this thing for like an hour, and it drugged me around indicator and then in towards the cove. Well, when I got it up to the side of the kayak, I was like, oh my God, it was like 10 feet long. And I was like, what do I do now? Because you're in a kayak trying to keep your balance and stuff. And then I just, like, didn't even know what to do. I was so scared because, you know, the thing was just so big. So I just took a deep breath, and I gaffed it in the head, and it started going crazy. And then the tail was, like, 10 feet long, whipping me all across the back and the head and everything. And I'm like, what the hell do I do now with it? I had nothing else, and it was gaffed in the head, and it was going crazy, and I'm, the kayak is leaning forward halfway in the air, and I didn't know what to do. So all I had in the side of my backpack was a little knife with a six-inch blade, and I lifted it up and moved the jaw away from me, and I stabbed it in the head like 20 times and killed it and then just pulled it up on my legs and paddled into the beach in the cove. That's so gnarly. Yeah, and then on the way home, I was like, I always, things I didn't think about, so I had to put it on my kayak, pull it up to my my truck. I didn't have a truck then, it was a Pathfinder Nissan. And I was like, how am I gonna get this thing home? It's all bloody, nasty, all slimy. So I had to tie it on the back of my spare tire. I tied the tail and tied it around the spare tire and drove it home to Lock and Cheat. And it was dripping all on the freeway, all over the cars. And one thing about thresher sharks, too, when you cut it, you cut the heads head off and all the fins and stuff and get all the guts out. And it's weird. After everything's off and you cut it straight down into steaks, and even after it's dead for hours, the meat still moves on the, on the, on the, the, the ground with the head off and all the fins and you can look at the meat and it's moving on the rock nasty yeah because it's from the muscles and the nerves in it and it still thinks it's alive and it's not dead yet that is such a crazy story I know, huh? I decided after that, I was like, you know what? I've got enough thresher sharks, and I sold my kayak and bought a boat. <laughs> <laughs>